Hey, that's a soda pop from Soda Hughes, and you are watching the Malak channel. And today we're looking at a manga, Color of Rage, by Kazuo Koike and Seizaku Kano. Um, this one I found and got because it was ranked decently high on one of those, I don't know, manga ranking sites. Uh, I was looking for a kind of one off, one shot manga, you know, one book stories. Because. I want to get more into manga, kind of understand more of uh, the artistry, uh, get more experienced uh, in seeing how stories are told and what kind of stories are told. Uh, and uh, so I was looking for one-offs because uh, I feel like sometimes it's nice to have some, you know, examples that are self-contained uh, examples and also uh, something that I don't have to uh, buy 24 volumes of because that can get expensive, uh, especially when they're not super available uh, in the US and also uh, yeah sometimes uh, some of them are unfinished and remained unfinished uh, sometimes indefinitely or for years uh, so I was looking at you know one-offs and I found this one thought uh, it looked compelling very sexy cover with great line work uh, we got our parental advisory sticker just uh, so in case you couldn't tell by the cover this is not the manga you should be getting for your child, probably. <laughs> um, so, if you're a fan of this, just as a warning, I am reviewing this. I am going to be critical, critical of it. I am going to say right off the bat, it's it's gorgeous. The artwork is beautiful, but in terms of the story, there's a lot of problems. I feel like. So, if this is your favorite ever manga, I mean, I guess you can get angry at me in the comments, but just be warned. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> there are a lot of problems with it, in my opinion. Uh, one of the things that I think is admirable and wonderful about it is uh, just, yeah, the visuals are incredible. And uh, they are sort of consistent, but also diverse. Um, you know, it kind of starts with, uh, you know, kind of some of that ink wash looking uh paintings almost and then you know you get sometimes you know a lot of description with hatching you get stippling you get uh some of them with screen tones some of them are very uh simple only line work some of them include a lot of dynamic lighting and uh, different shading so the story starts uh it's a japanese man uh, and an african man who uh basically were slaves who are freed by a shipwreck kind of and they wind up uh in japan uh it's historical fiction so it's set historically in japan um yeah a lot of the action also uh it's got some good action the action is uh descriptive uh, evocatively done you can tell uh, for the most part very well what's happening in the action but a uh, man uh, the story kind of after the the story the first confrontation uh, we get is uh, you know some bandits and uh, there's a uh, so uh, we're gonna there is the parental advisory sticker. There is going to be... Uh, they aren't uh, realistic, I'd say. They're, they're stylized contour drawings. There is uh, representations of violence, uh, sexuality, and nudity. So be aware of that. And I'm going to be talking about those things because that is what's in the book. Uh, they have this first confrontation. His bandits uh, attacking some people. And uh, they're going to rape this woman. So that, that already off the bat is like kind of... Oof. Uh, but, you know, uh, unfortunately, that uh, is an evil part of uh, humanity. Uh, but And they do fight them. But then <laughs> uh, the woman is so uh, appalled and terrified of King, the black man, uh, that she throws herself off a cliff. And right from that part, uh, just those two, I was like, man, there's a... Uh, I feel like there's going to be some problems in this story. Uh, 
King, I feel like uh, the drawing of King is kind of hit and miss. But one thing I will say is uh, it does seem like an earnest attempt at, at drawing a black man. Uh, like, I don't feel like there's anything mocking or uh, messed up in it. Uh, they just sometimes seem to kind of struggle, which makes sense, you know, uh, ink medium, uh, kind of a very uh, high contrast way of uh, depicting a human being. Uh, and with black skin, maybe uh, you're getting slightly less contrast in the features, uh, and they're different kinds of features, so I can see how uh, it could be difficult. And even through throughout history uh, in in anime and manga, um, you can see that there is a struggle. Sometimes I think some of it is maybe rooted in uh, racism, and other times it's just out of uh, kind of the difficulty in representation, uh, in representing a black person in that medium to someone who has not done it enough. And in this one, it, it feels like an earnest attempt. Like, And so I feel like that is something worth mentioning. But yeah, again, we get a style change. Uh, with, you know, interesting composition. Uh, in the frames, there's a lot of just wonderful composition. But yeah, again, uh, <laughs> they're uh, gonna rescue kind of this village. There's some people being, uh, held hostage who are going to be executed. Again, it's kind of like a two-edged sword, you know, there's a, there's a big problems, but I'm like, oh, this is kind of admirable, I guess. Uh, King, so, so the two characters are King and George. George is the Japanese man, maybe he uh, took on the pseudonym to better communicate with the uh, slaves or the people he was uh, taken under. Uh, it is a little weird sometimes, him being called George, but uh, I guess maybe it works in the story. Uh, but yeah, the uh, king tends to uh, really want to rescue people. And he is depicted as being very strong and powerful, which is maybe a, a little bit stereotypical, but at least um, it's an attempt at, uh, I don't know, what I would feel are admirable qualities. He tends to be... Uh, more heroic than George, I feel like, throughout the story. But often in kind of stereotypical ways, which is also problematic, so I don't know. Um, I did hear and did read that the uh, creator is kind of a pulpy creator. This is definitely kind of a pulp story, so maybe uh, not much should be expected. But their idea is he's going to ride a chariot with swords attached to it. And attack the people and the people will be unable to hit him because uh, he's going to be undraped and so he will be it'll be harder to see him at night i guess <laughs> which is kind of a gimmick that they rely on multiple times in the story that i don't really know how i feel about uh, this part is also uh, a little bit screwy um there's kind of a, a caravan that goes by with uh, kind of uh an upper class woman. Uh, there's kind of this awkward conflict where um, King ends up having to kind of lift something. Uh, she thinks it's like really crazy cool how big and strong he is, and so she like keeps asking him to lift things higher, higher, and harder. Um, and this woman uh, feels bad for him, steps in the way. Uh, she gets injured makes King mad, so he chucks the chariot at the people, and then uh, they freaking kill everybody <laughs> in the caravan. Uh, and then King goes to the upper-class woman, and uh, he rips her clothes off, and he's like, uh, that's how it feels to be put on display. Uh, and he definitely gets pretty rapey, and it's just, it's... Uh, it's, it's not good. I mean, I can understand the anger, and they kind of talk a little bit about his anger. Which is good, but also, man, 
it's a mess. <laughs> and then uh, they introduce kind of uh, this kind of casino, but how uh, it's brought into the plot is uh, King is going around and he, he starts getting horny on Maine, like hella horny. It, <laughs> it leads to some awesome illustrations, but <laughs> <laughs> but he gets so horny he has to run into the forest and like rip a tree out of the ground and George is like what's wrong dude so he punches the shit out of King <laughs> and then he's, he's like what's up and King's like dude I want to fuck and <laughs> George is like oh that makes sense <laughs> and so they're like dude we'll, we'll just buy some girls and King's like are you sure you can do that and I'm like oh man this is not going anywhere good so they're like, we got to get some money. How do they go to get some money? They go to a casino. The casino has a reputation for having, uh, you know, better rates, a good system. <laughs> and throughout all this, King is still horny. So there's like some asides where he's just like staring at a girl and he's just oh, he's struggling. So <laughs> oh, no. So yeah, they, uh, a woman wins a lot of money. Uh, and eventually they find out that uh, the reason that people are allowed to win so much is because uh, the Yakuza, they uh, they kill foreigners because the foreigners uh, take the money out of the system. So that's how they're able to kind of maintain uh, their business. Although, um, especially if they're going after foreigners, I'm not quite sure how the reputation spreading could really... Uh, could really work. I feel like you probably wouldn't get that good of reviews. I don't know. Maybe they're really good at managing how many people they kill. But the duel uh, between the bodyguard kind of security officer uh, is wonderful. Just these frames are so cool. The little sword fight. But yeah, they kill them. And uh, the woman who was murdered, King is like, oh, do we have to leave her here? Like, I don't, it almost sounds like can we keep her and I'm just like this is so fucked <laughs> and uh, there's also this uh, <laughs> there's this one panel where it says you know it's worse than the deep south and I was like mm, I don't know if you want to go saying that but uh, yeah they run off so yeah they've uh, they've killed so many people at this point and uh, then they're like, man, like, why are these people coming after us? Uh, and I guess it has to do with like a uh, kind of murder conspiracy that happened in the town. Uh, there's a few moments I felt like there were times for uh, interesting conversations or interesting storylines. Um, but it usually just devolves into them just fucking killing everybody. So yeah, they, uh, they get uh, captured, they find out about the conspiracy, George has kind of got a plan, but it's not going to work because uh, the community is obviously not going to follow the laws, because um, the government officials are doing a, a conspiracy to cover up uh, a murder. So uh, yeah, they uh, get to killing everybody again, uh, they escape, uh, kill a lot more people and then they go off into the woods uh, in the woods they kill a couple people uh, George uh, is like they're gonna keep hunting us and he's like I can't really hide here because I look so different from everyone so I'm just gonna kill that entire town uh <laughs> And it does kind of uh, have sort of an interesting discussion on uh, racial anger and uh, kind of the abuse and mistreatment, but it's it's a little cartoonish and uh, like many of the characters, a little one dimensional. So I don't. Uh, it's tough because it's like you have this pulpy thing, and you're like, oh man, like I wish it was more. But then when it tries to be a little bit more, you're like, ooh, this is getting. A little uncomfortable. I don't know if this is being handled <laughs> very well. Uh, so he's like, yeah, dude, I'm going to go and I'm going to kill that entire village. So he leaves George. He goes. He gets to kill him. Uh, yeah. 
smashes up, burns up the town. He's he's uh, massacring everybody. George is like, uh, where did he go? So uh, he goes down and he, he helps out. So then, uh, yeah, they, they're just blowing through, killing everybody. <laughs> There's a lot of that. And yeah, he uh, etches into the floor colored, I guess. Uh, it's just a uh, little uncomfortable. <laughs> See, I've been there going. I guess maybe one of them from the village survived. Uh, they try to take refuge with the Yakuza. They're like, maybe we'll become Yakuza. Uh, the guy sabotages that, gets them in trouble. So then... You guessed it. What's what's going to be the resolution? Do you think it's going to be uh, A, we talk it through, B, a creative solution through cunning, or C, fucking kill everybody? Uh, if you guess C, ladies and gentlemen, you are right. <laughs> so we get some more very beautiful uh, action scenes where everyone's uh, killing everybody. Uh, then, uh, so their next plan of attack is, uh, okay, well, we can't join the Yakuza, Maybe we'll go to George's uh, hometown. So they're going through uh, the frozen kind of mountainous areas and uh, they're really close. And then they find a soldier, kind of a policeman who is guarding uh, a couple of uh, high profile criminals. And uh, I guess all of his comrades died. And the, the, they're like, you can't carry both of us. And uh, the police officer is like, I'm determined to uh, bring these people to justice and I can't just kill them here. Um, I need you two to uh, carry them. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> They're like, but we gotta get to the hometown ASAP. Uh, King is like, well, I think uh, we should do the honorable thing though, maybe. And uh, help the police officer because we've uh, killed so many people. Maybe we should try and do something uh, honorable. And he really respected the police officer's position. Uh, and so they go back and they help the police officer kill uh, the rescue party that was sent for the criminals. But the police officer dies in the pro uh, process. Uh, King is carrying both of them for a while. Uh... But then, you know, uh, yeah, uh, the police officer dies uh, when they fight off the criminals uh, raiding party. And then uh, King and George are like, uh, oh, well, well, I guess. <laughs> and then they leave the, crim the criminals to freeze to death and they will walk off into the freezing storm, uh, snowstorm. And that's how it ends. Uh, yeah. Uh, a lot of beautiful art, not a whole lot of substance. Uh, oh, I, I forgot to say, yeah, after they get the money for the whorehouse, there's like, I was like, oh God, this isn't going to be good. But luckily, sorry, the camera died. Um, so they go to the whorehouse, King looks around and he's like, oh, do these people have any control over their fate? Can they leave whenever they want? And uh, George is like, no, they're less than slaves. And then King feels guilty. And he's like, oh, I was a slave and that really sucked. So maybe I'm not feeling in the mood anymore. And George is like, oh, I guess me neither. So I'm like glad they didn't go through with that. But still, it was just like, it was a little painful to read all that. I was like, oh, God. And then there's kind of like this short story, Crybaby Ishimatsu. Again, uh, very beautiful art, uh, kind of this very cool guy confronts uh, kind of a, a street hoodlum and uh, calls him out on being a loser, which then uh, unveils some childhood trauma, which then the uh, hoodlum decides to face uh, and kind of be a hero. And he just literally like kills another street hoodlum uh, and gets his eye gouged out. But he feels uh, vindicated. Uh, and yeah, basically the moral of the story is like, don't be a bully and being a bully can come out of uh, insecurity and just, you know, try not to be a loser. 
Uh, and it involves a, a, a historical figure, which is uh, kind of cool the way it's historical fiction. But, you know, when it comes to the themes or lessons of the book, don't be a bully. Uh, slavery is bad. These are all kind of very rudimentary things. And a book that is not intended for children. So I feel like the morals aren't exactly uh, impressive uh, or the ethics are very impressive. I guess maybe you could say that, you know, because these are historical fiction, maybe it's trying to look at those lessons from the historical pr uh, perspective, which maybe has value. I don't know. I was not impressed uh, with the stories, honestly. Uh, the art is great, but yeah, <laughs> the narrative definitely left me feeling kind of meh. But, uh, Masterful artwork. That's a that's a good thing to say about it. But yeah, I think uh, it's kind of hard to tell because I can only look up these things in English. Uh, I think the book was published uh, originally in 2008. But throughout the whole thing, I was getting vibes that like, I was like, this kind of feels like something uh, kind of like 70s-esque. But I guess the creator was uh, very active in the 70s. So maybe uh, that could explain uh, the feeling of the book. It is kind of interesting how some of the faces uh, do look more Western. They look kind of like uh, Western pulp comics, which makes me curious about the uh, influences of the uh, creator, because some of the faces uh, didn't didn't look Asian uh, and looked more like uh, kind of some of that some of those uh, pulp comics that would go on to inspire pop art, which was kind of a curious thing to me. But yeah. Um, I don't know if I can really recommend this, uh, unless you, uh, want to have it as an art book, but, or if those kind of stories are your thing, I guess, uh, but yeah, lots of action, not much substance, pretty book, color of rage. Thank you so much for, uh, watching the video. Hope to see you guys again. Check out my Patreon, like, subscribe, uh, do what you can to support the channel so we can keep, uh, exploring uh, visual media of the world. Thank you, and I hope to see you again. Take care. You're such a sweet